So today's video is all about how I became half decent at my job. I've been an agent for a couple of years now and I've picked up a few good tips along the way. So this is for any aspiring agents or anyone that's generally just interested in the industry. Uh, I'm gonna share a few things that should help anyone that's in sales and anyone that's just curious about how we go about our business in agency. But before we get into that, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. It helps out massively in the YouTube algorithm. We're trying to build this YouTube channel so I can send out more content for you guys to watch. So if you wouldn't mind, just hit that like button right now as I'm talking to you and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. Well, that being said, let's get straight into it. The first thing that really helped me as a new agent um, was just getting the basics right from the start. My first manager put a lot of emphasis on just doing the basic things and the boring things in agency extremely well. And then the fun stuff in terms of offers and deals would follow and he was absolutely right. It's all very simple. It's about following up with people consistently, always putting yourself out there, picking the phone up and calling people. So I think one of the first things that made me half decent at this job was getting all of that right from the start. I didn't um, do any deals for my first six months. I just purely focused on getting good at speaking to people on the phone, getting good at taking people to see more than one property, and then following up with them the next day to ask if they want to see anything else or if they'd like to make an offer on what I've just shown them. And it's just those three very basic uh, functions of an agent that you, well, once you've got them right and once you completely rinse and repeat them, um, the more fun stuff in terms of the offers and the deals eventually followed. And so I think for anyone starting out in the job, getting some of the basics right and working really hard is exactly what you should be focusing on in your first six to 12 months. As I said, it took me six months to do my first deal, but then in you know in the next six months after that, I did about 20. So that's definitely something that uh, anyone that's coming into the industry needs to consider. And uh, once you've got that right, not a lot can go wrong, if that makes sense. So the second thing that really helped me become half decent at this job is um, actually starting to get to know my shit. There's a lot of different factors and variables within the job um, and actually to do anything meaningful and to be any good at it, you need to know your stuff. Um, so I basically sat down and I thought about all of the factors that play a part in a negotiation or in a property sale and I started to develop an intricate understanding of each one of those factors. Um, most important one in a negotiation is an understanding of a property's value and so I use a platform called Lonres that allows me to research the pound per square foot ratios of every property that is being sold. A pound per square foot ratio is a term that we use all the time as agents and it's basically just a calculation that determines how much are you paying per square foot for a property. So you take the purchase price of a property divided by the square feet and it gives you the pound per square foot. Um, ratio and once you're able to regurgitate pound per square foot ratios road by road within an area it then makes conversations with buyers and sellers very easy because I can sit down have a conversation with a seller that wants to sell something in Westbourne Grove and tell them that this is the X that this is the average pound per square foot ratio for this road for this type of property it varies massively from property to property first floor flats will have different uh, pound per square foot ratios than third floor flats on the same road um, and from road to road again within areas it will vary massively but just having that understanding of, of property values and pound per square foot ratios is what enabled me to start uh, asking buyers to make offers and asking sellers to trust me with the sale of their property because I'm able to inform them on um, values which then gives them confidence in my ability to get the job done. Um, aside from property values, I think what's really important to understand as an agent is actually the legal side of the job and how a property transaction takes place. And I actually took a lot of time as a new agent um, to sit with lawyers. I went for lunches and dinners and Zoom calls even with lawyers um, within the property industry uh, and asked them to explain various different things within the legal system to me, such as deed of variations, what a management pack is, what searches are and what they consist of, all of these random terms that um, as someone new coming into the industry would have no idea about, 
I sat down with these guys and asked them to explain everything to me from A to Z and having that information and having a, a, such an integral understanding of, of the legal process again allows me to advise buyers and sellers really really well and so when I'm asking a buyer to make an offer and I'm discussing with them exactly how we're going to get the deal done in say a week's time and how they're going to pay X pound per square foot ratio all of this stuff adds together and gives the buyer uh, trust in my ability and therefore they're more likely to make the offer that I'm asking them to make. Same on the seller side, if we're talking about you know, the value of their property, how to price it correctly in order to get the right number of interest and then when we've got the interest, how are we then going to execute the deal and do the whole legal process um, from A to Z. If I'm able to discuss that with them uh, and, and take them through the whole journey um, and sound like I know what I'm talking about, then again it gives them a sort of high level of trust in what I'm saying and therefore they're more likely to instruct me to sell their property as an agent. So having that understanding of property values and how it differs road by road and property by property uh, as well as then you know the legal system and how all of that works from A to Z and how to make things more efficient and how it's different with every buyer and different with every property. Both of those things um, just increases trust levels between you and the buyer and you and the seller and therefore you start doing more deals, getting more offers from buyers and getting more listings from sellers because of as I say that sort of trust element. So that's something that um, it's probably the most important thing to uh, understand and to get a hold of in your own head whilst you're becoming a new agent because once you've got that it comes down to relationship building whether people like you or not um, and then you're able to start doing offers and doing deals by yourself independently without you know anyone telling you um, what to do so that's probably one of the most important ones and uh, it's definitely helped me become half decent at the job. So the third and final thing that I tried my best to get really good at and to help me become half decent at the job is um, the art of negotiating. Now, um, it is an art and it takes a lot of thought to actually get it right and to make sure that our clients, the sellers, are achieving the best price and sometimes in, in our case, the buyers uh, are getting the low, lowest price if we're, if we're negotiating on their behalf. I think when I'm representing a buyer, even if a buyer was to tell me that uh, they want to put an offer in of say 2.3 million pounds on a property that's on the market for 2.5 million pounds I would never ever go to the selling agent and, and give them that offer straight away I'd discuss with my client to make sure that actually we consider offering a bit lower than that so that then we end up at their, their target price of 2.3 it's a very common sales technique but one that's very effective so we would go in and we'd offer 2.1 and um, with a lot of struggle we'd make the, the sort of seller's agent sweat a little bit and eventually make our way up to 2.3 in the best case scenario, it would go up to something like 2.25, and therefore I'm winning an extra 50 grand for my client, and ultimately that's what they're paying us a fee to do. Um, so there's these small nuances that um, I've learned to apply over the years. Obviously, an inexperienced agent would fly into the seller's agent and say, "Great news! I've got an offer of 2.3 million," um, but that doesn't necessarily set the right tone and I think um, without taking you know the piss um, you should start a bit lower and eventually try and make your way up to where your client would want to be and same on the sales side um, when an asking price is set at 2.5 million if someone comes to me with an offer far below that uh, on the seller side I would just stand very firm and say well absolutely not you know the, 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 the asking price is 2.5 we have x amount of interest we have x amount of viewings we have X amount of offers. If you're really serious about this, I need you to come in at asking price and you stay very firm. There's no uh, point really in being quite schmoozy about everything, saying, well, you know, I could potentially make this work for you. And, and you know, if you give away too much or if you drop your guard too much on either side of the negotiation, people then don't take you really seriously and they try and get uh, you know, a, a really low deal. So I think just staying firm, staying close to your facts, um, and uh, playing that, that game, if that makes sense, especially when you're negotiating on behalf of a buyer, definitely helps and ultimately helps the deal happen as well. If you fly in straight away on behalf of your buyer with an offer of 2.3 million, it's likely the seller's going to offer two point, uh, a counter at 2.4 or 2.45 and you've already lost it because your buyer doesn't want to go higher than 2.3. So you've got to play both sides, if that makes sense, but ultimately um, there's a few things that I've, I've learned over the years that allow me to close more deals now than I would have done when I first started as an agent. So that's it for today. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave any questions down below in the comments. There will be a few things that I've missed, but I'm very active at replying to your comments. So leave any questions you have in there. And with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.